Hello, and welcome to the Sittin' and Knitting Podcast. I am your hostess, Diana, and today is Wednesday, August 17th, 2022, and I'm coming to you from sunny Southwest Ohio. Welcome. If this is your first time visiting with me, I appreciate you giving me a try. Welcome to the podcast or to the blog. And if you're a returning viewer, I really appreciate you as well. So welcome back. Um, It's been three weeks, almost four weeks, I think, since I recorded last because I was supposed to record last Friday and it was actually a few days before my birthday. So I took that day off and I wasn't home to record. So I thought I would just go ahead and keep with my every two week schedule. As I've said previously on the podcast, I've decided to start out um, every two weeks because I am not a fast knitter and sometimes I don't knit every day. And um, I'll talk more about that maybe later, but I don't get, I don't knit every day. And so just, you know, just to have enough content, I want to go about every two weeks. So, but today is Wednesday. Uh, another thing I said is I've been timing my recordings around um, our uh, bi-weekly Zoom meetings at work because I do work from home. So I don't always put uh, video recording clothes on. <laughs> I always get dressed for work though because I feel like... Um, how you dress changes your attitude. And so if I was just lounging in pajamas, I think I would have a lounging type of feeling and that's not the feeling you wanna have when you're working. Um, So I'm sorry, I'm looking over here, make sure I'm recording. So anyway, (laughs) every two weeks is working right now. Maybe when I um, hopefully get more viewers like I used to have eight, six, eight years ago, I didn't have a lot, just a small community, but I enjoyed it. But um, I will start recording more. Uh, If you are watching, I do see, excuse me, I hope that doesn't come up on the YouTube thumbnail. If you are, um, I lost my train of thought. If you're, um, forgive me, (laughs) Um, welcome. That's what I'm going to say because I lost my train of thought. So um, thank you so much. Oh, I know what I was going to say. (laughs) If you are viewing, please just leave me a comment or anything. I haven't got, I'm doing this. This is my way of joining the conversation, uh, joining the community and hopefully making um, good connections. But like I said, also, and not my last video, I'm still very shy. I haven't even, you know, really posted it publicly that I'm doing a podcast. So I think that is, let's see, what else do we talk about at the beginning? Ways you can find me. I'm a little rusty, but just bear with me. And I hope that this recording is is okay. I'm recording on my uh, laptop computer and... um, It seems a little choppy, but I hope it cleans up in editing. (laughs) But if it's recording like this, I don't know. So we will see. Uh, I used to just record on my laptop previously. I see some podcasters have really expensive equipment and I don't think I need all of that. So for myself, because this is just a blog of sharing. I'm not a designer. I'm not... trying to make any money with anything. So thank you for coming and sitting and knitting with me. Uh, You can find me on Ravelry as His Handmade. Um, And I think I said the last couple episodes, I was going to update the name and I still have not done it. You can find me as Lady Die on Instagram and I will link those below because i not sure if it's Lady Die or Lady Die seventy three. I was I am prepared in other ways. Um, Ravelry and Instagram is are the best ways to find me. And if you have any questions or want to read it, reach out to me. You can 
email me at ladydie73 at gmail.com. And that's L-A-D-E-E-D-I. And I will put that below too. And that's the spelling for Instagram too. So I'll put all of that below. I can at least do that. I hope if you're watching with me, you're proud of me if you watched the last one that I did put links in the last one. And I do want to get to a place where I go back and and put links on the other one, other videos too. Okay, so let's get started because I don't want to make this long and it's already been five minutes of me just rambling. Um, I have a finished object kind of and I have what I'm working on and maybe a tool to share with you. I just wanted to knit and chat and connect. Um, so I don't have a lot planned, but let's get started. So first segment, what is out of my hands? Um, I don't know. Oh, I said I wasn't gonna do this. <laughs> I don't know if you all remember, but I believe on the last on the last podcast, I was I told you I was making Jason's cashmere hat and I was making it out of Madeline Tosh sock. And I forget what the colorway is called, Sorenza, and it's not showing up very good, but it's a really vibrant color way. I ended up um, winding it double um, on my ball winder and I knit this hat on I did the ribbing on size 6 needles and the body of the hat it's a cabled hat um, if I can figure out how to insert a picture I will and the body I did on 8 so when I got it done well first of all I wanted to say one thing about knitting this hat and I wish I had it in front of me to show you um, it was just a simple uh, left cross, three stitch left cross cable. And then it had, you know, um, it had kind of a, 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 it's a free hat. It had a knit pearl, a knit pearl knit panels between like six stitches of knit pearl knit knit pearl knit <laughs> and then you start, and then you start the cables anyway. When I first started the hat from the last place I showed you, I had did a whole repeat of the cables and I just didn't like how my stitches were looking when I was going, it must be knit pearl, knit pearl. <laughs> Cause when I was going from the pearls into the cables and then after I crossed the cable, went back to the pearls, those pearl stitches uh, between the cables were just so loosey goosey and I did not like it at all. I didn't know what was, I kind of knew, you know, because I have been knitting for a while and I do have more experience than maybe what I show, but um, I kept thinking, mm. so I knit another half a repeat and I said, Diana, you can't do this. What you're going to have to do, so I ripped it all the way back to the ribbing and on those purl stitches, before and after the cables, I twisted them. I purled them through the back loop. And that was able to tighten it up. And um, and it looked fine. But I don't know if it changed my gauge. I didn't take I didn't check my gauge. And uh, I knit the pattern as written. And it came, it seemed like it was a little small. I really and it couldn't have been not the pattern's fault, but my fault. But the brim, or excuse me, the ribbing, I think it was two inches. It's supposed to be two inches of ribbing. The ribbing was half of the hat. So I think even with, I, it had five cable repeats, it was, still wasn't a very long hat. And then I started the decreases. So... I was thinking, oh, this is too small. It's like a small adult. And I did post some pictures on Instagram and I'll try to insert them here. 
<clears throat> and I was talking to my daughter, Journey. She's 22 about it. But she was on the phone with me when I took it off the needles, put it on my head like all knitters do, went to the bathroom <laughs> and FaceTime with Journey and was telling her about it. She was like, oh, it's pretty. It's pretty. I want it. And I thought, well, your head is as big as mine, but we'll see. It fit okay, but when you rolled the brim up, it stopped right here. So then my son, my 15-year-old, that's my youngest, he saw the hat and he put it on his head and he was just, it's mine, it's mine. I said, well, it really was supposed to be a Christmas present for one of you children. <laughs> um, and then that same day, Journey came over and they started fighting over the hat, arguing over the hat, no no violence, no children were hurt, but they started arguing back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And I said, well, I'm making everybody a hat for Christmas. And so uh, the baby, or I call him the baby, he's 15. He said, well, I want a gray one or a black one. And I said, okay, I can make you a gray one or a black one. And so it ended up, Journey took the hat and he didn't get the hat because she showed him a text. This is so funny. I don't remember it. She showed him, she told me that I told her in a text she could have the hat. I believe I just told her she could try it on, but she showed him a text that said, <laughs> I said she could have the hat. I'm not sure what the text read. So anyway, um, who doesn't, what knitter doesn't love that? As soon as something comes off your needles, People are fighting over it. Who doesn't love that? I love that. So I'm knitting six more. I have six children. I'm knitting six more hats. And I will start with the baby's hat. And I think I'm going to end up knitting seven. Um, because I'm going to knit him a hat before Christmas. So I have, I'm have. i going to try another hat pattern. And I will share that with you next time. Um, I've got an order in, I think I'm going to go with Simply Sock Company and, um, I have an order in for some worsted yarn, I think, or DK, DK weight yarn to make some hats, some really pretty hats. One thing that I wanted to say was I don't like knitting double strands. It's not my comfort zone. I mean, I can do it, you know, but you just have to be very watchful and and I didn't I just didn't enjoy doing that on that project. So, it, maybe if I had knitted with just worsted weight yarn cuz it calls for worst worsted weight, but I um I doubled this fingering. Um maybe it would have been more it was enjoyable as far as cables are like you know you just want to get to the next one um <clears throat> but i just i'm i wasn't super happy with it so i started it july 21st and i finished it about three weeks later mm, maybe two weeks so i'll be happy to get started and i hope i can put some pictures in here for you i really do so I'm going to try to do that. So that's my first finished object. I don't have it, but there is a good reason why I don't have it. So that's all that's out of my hands. So we will go to the next segment. What's in my hands? What I'm working on. I will show you what you've already seen first, which is the Fila tank. And this is by Amy Christoffers. And I am knitting it out of um, Cascade Heritage Yarns. It is a cotton linen blend. I believe it's 70% cotton, 30% linen. You know, every time I do the podcast, I can't find a ball band for it. So this is it. Uh, I'm looking over here because I have my other ones over here. But... I don't have a ball band for any of them. So this is the color and the color is on my Ravelry page as well. Um, this is the color. Let me see. The last time I showed you, 
I was right here, uh, right where this marker is. I haven't been working on this a whole lot. I, on the last podcast, I put it on the end for you, um, but I moved it to the middle um, just because it. I, I can tell my progress better, better if it's in the middle. So this is what I have so far. I'm still just on the back. Um, it's an enjoyable knit. Um, I'm not a super fan of cotton. So there's some inconsistencies, you know, just um, not smooth smoothness of the stitching. And I say it has to do with the yarn and not the knitter, but so I am working on armhole decreases now. And this is just the back. And then I will work on the front. Um, it's a pleasant knit though for, for cotton yarn. Oh, I am knitting this on US 4s. US 4, and these are my Chowgu lace, which are some of my favorite needles. US 4. Um, anything else I wanted to say? I have this cute little stitch marker here. I'm not a gamer, but it's cute. I got it from a, a shop on Etsy. Let's see. Just hoping it'll focus. There. I put my face away. Okay. So that's that knit uh, stitch marker. Um, I don't really have anything to say about it. You know, I just have some complaints about knitting with cotton. And this is a good, you know, I just started knitting again in July. So this is a good piece to just kind of work on my gauge. Every little imperfection I see, I don't know what happened right there. <laughs> but I'm hoping it'll block out. Um, that's it. I plan to make matching shorts. And remember I said I was going to have, it's getting cooler now. But I will still wear, I will wear it to work. I will wear this tank top and shorts. This is usually what I wear, you know, for work when I'm not recording. So I'm enjoying that. Let me go ahead real, well, I'm not going to take the time to move the marker. I just hope I remember when I start knitting again. So that's not a whole lot of knitting for three weeks, almost four weeks. Um, but that's because I was working on the hat and then my other projects. So that is that. And I just have it, I, I showed you, I just have it in a, a reusable shopping bag um, that I keep close to me. My next project, if you've been a viewer for a while, you know that I don't even know how to describe it. My relationship with sock knitting. I love hand knitted socks. I love the finished project product. I know how to make socks. I know how to do a gusset and a heel flap at least. Um, I know how to do a couple of short roll heels. Uh, the Fliegel heel used to be one of my favorites, but I don't really understand how to do it um, top down. Uh, I know there are directions, but it just, it didn't fit right for me. That used to be one of my favorites because there's really nothing to it. But um, I believe you, um, it's a free pattern. I believe you increase out and then decrease in to kind of shape your heel. But there's no wrapping and turning or anything. Um, it's not, it's not, anyway, I know how to make socks, but... And I want to make socks all the time, <laughs> but I, I don't know. I don't know. We talked about my last awful saga with my chocolate chip, mint chocolate chip ice cream socks. Uh, if you don't know what happened, go look at the last video because there is, I was asking 
<laughs> well, there's some yarn available for anybody who wants it. I'll just say that. So I said, before I give up on sock knitting again, I'm going to try the nine inch circul circulars. A lot of people are talking about that. I have tried it in the past and made my hands cramp. But I said, you know, new me, read, starting knitting again after a few years of not knitting. So I cast on, I ordered from the Crazy Sock Lady Co. Um, <clears throat> a 12 inch circular and some stitch markers. And what else did I order? But my, my circular came in. So I cast on with this opal. I'm being real quiet while the camera focuses. Maybe if I don't talk, it, it'll focus better. You know, I wonder if it's that light that's making it wash out. Let me, hold on, I'll be right back. It seems like I get up every episode, don't I? <laughs> oh no, that's too dark. Okay, we won't do that. <laughs> I thought maybe. I was trying to get done uh, but before it got dark, but it's starting to be overcast. So I'm using opal. I don't know which opal it is. I've had it for a long time, and I don't have the band for it. But I do know it's opal yarn. So this is all I've gotten. Um, and I cast it on... a couple weeks ago or a week or so ago. I've only gotten two rows, two rounds, excuse me. It hasn't been terrible, but it hasn't been fun. But I keep telling myself that give your get through the ribbing and see how you like doing just the stocking it in the round. And I am doing this on a US 1 2.25 millimeter needle. I am doing a knit two pearl one um and i should have just went with a knit two pearl two uh that's what i usually do on socks and starting a new method um i should have just because i just feel like and it, i'm concentrating more now because i'm doing a knit two pearl one and all that so this is all i've gotten so far I haven't been having a lot of fun so I'm going to order, I'm still going to keep this on the needles and come back to it. I'm not putting it either in the um, unfinished object bin. It's still walking around with me on, as a whip. But I think I want to try DK weight socks and see if I could just get more comfortable with the process of it and then go down to back down the fingering weight. So that's my sock saga continued for now on that. Um, I have one more project. I started, and this is a new cast on, I started the Garter Marler Cardigan by Stephen West. I own a couple of his patterns, but this is the first one I think that I've done. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the first one of his I think I've ever knit. And it is a fingering weight cardigan, but you do hold the yarn stubble. Um, and it's kind of a scrappy cardigan. Uh, let me see. I have it printed out, but it's in black and white. And I am knitting. Let's see, I have my notes for you. I am knitting the size 5 which is has a finished um, finished bust of 52. Um, the pattern suggests three inches of positive ease and my finished bust bust measurements are 49 or my <laughs> finishes <laughs> whatever it finishes doing what it's doing it's a 49. So I'm knitting the 42. I am using some scrap yarn sock yarn. Um, that I've had in my stash for, well, like that opal yarn. I've had that opal yarn for at least eight, 
or more years. Um, and what else did I have? That Madeline Tosh, I had that in my uh, stash for about eight years. Um, because just a little backtrack, I had taken a knitting hiatus right around when COVID started, but not because of COVID per se, um, just a lot going on in my life. And so I just recently moved and I thought, sadly, that I would never knit again. So I just kept my absolute, absolute favorite yarns or yarns that I thought I could really work with. And I got rid of the rest and now I regret it. <laughs> so anyway, I don't have all of the ball bands and I think that's fine because when people do scrappy projects, they don't have all of their bands. But I wanted to show you, I have some really nice yarn. Um, the first yarn I have is Pagewood Farm Denali. It's a hand dyed sock yarn. I don't know. Let's see. I don't know if they're dying anymore. Uh, I wish you could see the band. I am so sorry. I don't know why. <laughs> this is not showing up for you, but you would rather see the yarn. I am guessing because I've had these in my stash for a while. It says the greens. So I am guessing that it is this one. Beautiful. I'm guessing it's this one, but I also have a fleece artist, 100% merino wool. Um, I don't know if they're still dying. And this is the Ireland colorway. So it could be <laughs> this one or this is the other one. So I have these three hand dyed yarns. One of them, let me see. One of them I got from Sock Bunny. Do you remember Sock, Sock Bunny Knit and Fit? And she started dying for a while. So one of these are hers, but these are my hand dyed yarns. I'm, these are full skeins that I've just never knit socks out of. And I said, I might as well knit something else <clears throat> that I want. Here is some opal yarn that I am. It's more green um, in person than what it's showing up right now. Uh, yeah, it's more green. Like this one, um, that's why I'm thinking this one might be the Ireland because this is a really deep green. This one has grays and blues and greens. I love this. Um, and this one is so squishy and just, it's more of an army green. And, oh, <laughs> and this is another one. I don't have the ball bands. I don't know where they went, but this is a hand dyed. Um, so I have that one. And then my last one, I believe this is Regia. Regia sock. Is it Regia? It's either Regia or Patton's Croy. Uh, but I think it's Regia. But now I'm thinking it might be patents. So I have all of these colors. And you're probably like, Diana, show us the project. So these, these, these. And I can't pick up the other ones because they are on the needle. So let me show you. So. Ah, oh, please, please, please. I don't want them to get tangled. So this is where I am so far. I have knit the ribbing. Let me make sure I'm showing you the front. <laughs> uh, nope, I was showing you the back. So I have knit, it's top down. I knit the ribbing 
and then I did the short row. I've done the short row shaping uh, on the back and then I'm starting to do my increases. So he has um, directions a little bit about melting, what he calls melting colors together. If you've done a Stephen West, you've probably seen it. I just, not, I'm not, I don't do a lot of multicolor projects. So I've just kind of been following along on his, um, I watched the video, the eight minute video about this project and just following along on changing yarns, kind of how he suggests. I think it's going to be really pretty. I want to put a pop of this in. I have more than this. Um, I didn't weigh my hat, but I have enough that I can like maybe just put it on the cuffs or maybe just a thin couple rows on the button band. But for this scrappy, excuse me for hitting it, for this scrappy sweater, I do kind of want to incorporate this Madeline Tosh because I love it. I love it. Um, I did, excuse me, I did eight, eight, seven. Okay. I did the ribbing on US seven needles. And I got to use my signatures. I only have like two or three pair of signatures. So I get, I'm happy every time I get to use them. I did the ribbing on sevens and then I started on the body. And after I got just this far, I, I, um, checked my gauge. Now you all may have thought that I was a pretty good at gauge swatching because I did a lot of gauge swatching a few weeks ago, but I just, I was so excited. I just wanted to catch you, uh, cast on. So I checked my gauge and the gauge is supposed to be 20 stitches per inch. And I have 17. What does that mean? Too many stitches and four inches will make my project smaller. I believe. <laughs> so... Since this is not, you know, the first few numbers are universal for all sizes. I haven't really gotten to where I have to separate for my particular size. So I just switched up and went up to a nine because I did the ribbing on seven, started this on eight. Usually eight, when I used to knit, uh, size eight needles on worsted weight yarn was my happy fabric for garter stitch. But... I was wondering why it was coming out so bulletproof looking. You know, you don't want to stretch garter out like that. I thought I'm not ripping back. It's just going to be at the top. I hope it doesn't make that big of a difference, you know, and then just going forward. So I switched to the, um, what did I say? The nines. So then, you know, it should be okay. I think it'll be fine. Um, just going forward, I will do the night. So I'm very excited about this. I'm loving it. I tried Stephen West. Uh, he calls them shorter rows. Super easy. Um, I've never done German short rows, but I'll have to look into that. But that was super easy. And what else do I have to say? I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying changing the colors. I wanted a scrappy project. I wanted a scrappy uh, fingering weight project. And now I have this, this cardigan just came up perfect. And I wanted a cardigan. Now, see, you see, I'm still playing it a little safe because I have colors that are like all the same color. I do have other sock yarn colors I could probably put in this to really make it scrappy but I kind of wanted to stick with a bluish green a green theme uh, but I think the red in there will be pretty I have not put this in yet so I don't know how this is going to look you know now that I'm looking at it all the other colors are darker I'm just going to do it um I did 
the ribbing I did all with this beautiful hand dye yarn. So that's how that knit up. So, um, what is that right there? It looks like where I pulled it a little bit. Uh, see when I tried to just pull that to show you all, it kind of stretched it out already. So I'm hoping that I like this. I am not a big fan. I love knitting garter stitch, but I don't know if it's, sometimes I feel like it makes me look puffier. <laughs> like I don't need any help in that area. So um, I'm super excited about this though, super excited. So these are the two yards that I'm using right now. And I lost count. But I'm just going to be random. I'm kind of doing, oh, four rows, six rows, you know, four rows, six rows, and switch colors. Um, <clears throat> one thing that Stephen West said that I'm glad that I read his directions or whatever, um, I think I looked at Marlin colors, which I wouldn't have done. So instead of this being a stripey, um, cardigan where I'm changing colors every so many rolls. I'm melding the colors together, melting, melting the colors together. So say I will knit with these two for a four to six rows, and then you just change one color at a time. So for another four to six rows, and it doesn't have to match, I will cut this one, add a new color, so this one is actually will be carried longer. And then when it's time to change again, I cut this one and add a new color. And then when it's time to change again, you cut the oldest one. So you're still kind of melting them together. So it's not like a stripey, it's a melting. Um, I got a little stitch marker, another stitch marker. I don't want to really talk about the purchase because I didn't get what I purchased from the Etsy shop. So this is a stitch marker. It's a little ghost. Or a mummy. <laughs> it might be a mummy. I think it's a mummy because it's wrapped up. Um, I'm not a big Halloween fan. Uh, that's not my favorite holiday to like decorate for. Anything like that. No judgment to people who do. It's just not. I probably wouldn't choose this stitch marker, but it is so cute. So I decided to, I wanted to use it anyway um, because the shop I ordered it from is from England. Um, I got some other, I got, oh, there it goes. You can see he's so cute. I got a witch's hat and a pumpkin. I did not order those at all. So I didn't have a good experience. I didn't get anything I ordered. I ordered nine different stitch markers and none of them were anything that I ordered. But I'm still using it and I'm going to enjoy it. Um, so I that is all that I have in my hands. Um, I don't have any new purchases to show you. This won't be a really big... I know a lot of people like to see stash and new purchases and things like that. I don't do a lot of shopping. And then I, I was thinking like I, I, I purchased, um, for instance, when I cast on this sweater, I was going to use hmm, size seven and eight needles. And I didn't have size eight needles. So I ordered them off of Amazon and got them the next day. Higher, higher sharps. And I accidentally, accidentally got a 60 inch cord and I only wanted a 40 inch cord. <laughs> but anyway, so I was using, so I would notice I buy a lot of tools, like I've had tons of stitch markers come in. Um, oh, I don't even have them up here. I like, I got some needle point protectors. So those are the kind of things that I buy. I don't spend a, I, I don't buy a lot of yarn but I can share with you when I do I'm 
just getting started again so i'm just kind of knitting what i have but one tool i want to show you that is my absolute favorite um and i got this idea from the drunk knitter her name is sophia i think that's how she pronounces it sophia sophia and um i really like her true crime and knit podcast i like all of her podcasts she's a great designer she has a youtube channel go check her out but and a lot of people talk about these but it was from her link different there are different kinds i love this i love this when i'm knitting sometimes it shifts on me shifts on me but i love it it has let me see if i can do this it has three different settings on these. It comes with a US power cord, USB power cord. I don't have to charge it very much, but I mean, it has just really added nice innovation to my knitting. So, and this was $16 on Amazon. I will try to remember and link it below just in case you're interested. I never thought that I needed anything like this, but I went ahead and bought it because I do a lot of knitting recently in the evenings or on the weekend nights while watching TV. So, um, watching movies. So, I didn't think I needed it, but it is a great, great asset. So, I think that's all that I have for you today. I usually have a sitting and knitting segment, which is when um, we... Have a, like a knitting circle where we kind of just talk about a subject. Um, I didn't really have time to think of anything today. Um, I, I know one of the things um, that I was talking about. Um, again, I lost my train of thought. Oh, how come I don't knit every day? Sometimes I like I watch some people who knit or podcasters who knit and they seem like they fit their life into their knitting time instead of their knitting time to their life into their life. I am not judging. I wish I could do that. <laughs> but it seems like I'm trying to knit in the midst of other things. I'm not a real busy person. Um, but my um, my job is kind of, uh, um, it takes a lot of mind work. So sometimes I'm just really weary in the evening. Sometimes I'm so sleepy and like I want to spend every waking moment that I have that I'm not doing my adult things that I have to do, knitting. But I just don't, I, it doesn't happen for me like that. Um, and, I, and sometimes I don't feel guilty because there's nothing to feel guilty about. I feel disappointed. That's the word I'm trying to use. And I'll wake up or I'll know that I've gone a day or two without knitting, picking up my knitting. And I, I'm ready for it to become a habit for me again because um, it used to be a habit and it got me through a lot of tough times. So... Do any of you have trouble fitting your knitting in or do you wish that you knit more than you do now? I would like to know if you have any tips and tricks. You know, I hear some people say, oh, I get up a half hour early and then I'll knit for a half hour. I'll do 10 rounds. If I get up early, it I'm still... I'm not knitting. Sometimes I, you know, I'll get my coffee or one of the things that I think really hinders my knitting. If I'm going to be 100 and totally, 100% totally honest is that phone. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Ravelry. I'm not on Ravelry a whole lot looking at patterns, but usually I'm on Instagram and then I get inspiration from Instagram and go over to Ravelry and put uh, a lot of uh, projects in my queue or just look them up. Or, you know, um, if I'm watching podcasts, I follow links. And uh, I, so I'm busy doing that instead of, instead of knitting. 
Um, I wish there was a way that Instagram, you could just watch Instagram like this, you know, instead of scrolling. I'm not always on Instagram. I don't want you to think that. But let's say if I have two hours in the evening, I may spend an hour on Instagram and I would rather spend that hour knitting. So I'm going to find my balance um, and it'll be fun. I'm going to find my balance. So that has been really what's on my mind is that I wish I would just knit more, knit more. <laughs> um, so my next podcast, I want to have my life a little bit more together so I can talk to you about some of my favorite podcasts that I'm watching. Um, mm, there is, see, there's one lady, she's 72 stitches on Instagram, but I don't think that's what her podcast name is. And she is in Michigan and um, I'm doing a disservice. I'm going to link her below. I really, really enjoy her podcast. Uh, she's a prolific sock knitter, which impresses me. Um, she just has a very laid back, easygoing, conversational podcast just sharing her knitting and I just have been really 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 enjoying that podcast lately so uh, that's one of the ones I want to show you or talk to you about um, and then I will get my we will talk about some others later what have I been watching because I haven't been reading anything but I do have some books in my audible to read um I think since the last time we've spoken, I have not, we haven't watched Stranger Things. Um, I have watched the first few seasons, first, what, three seasons and now it's season four. So I'm starting again from scratch because um, my sweetheart has never watched it before. But we've only gotten the episode one of season two because he keeps falling asleep on it. So I may end up watching that by myself. Um, so what we have been watching, oh, I wrote those down. I think I did write those down. Find my phone. I said I was going to, I had a couple of them that I wanted to, to write you and show you. Oh, I did let's see. Um, David Arnold, David A. Arnold. <laughs> this that was a while ago that we watched it, but anyway, I hope I didn't tell you this before. Um, David A. Arnold has a, his most recent stand up on Netflix. I've never heard him before, and as a matter of fact, I think he has two stand ups, and I didn't watch the first one <laughs> yet. But uh, he popped up a couple weeks ago. It was really funny, a really good. If you like comedy, it's not super dirty, which I don't mind that all the time. But anyway, David A. Arnold, that was um, a good Netflix special. Um, we watched Oculus on Hulu. It was kind of scary. It's kind of good, though. I gave it three out of five stars. That David A. Arnold, I gave him four stars. Um, we finished all the Star Wars series, finally. Um, so I really enjoyed watching those. And uh, Prey. There was this new movie out on Hulu, and they made it look like it was just going to be awesome. And it was called Prey, uh, where this young Indian girl was kind of uh, fighting against the predator or uh, alien that looked like the predator. It was okay. I gave it a three. It was just okay. My weekly shows that I like right now is Married at First Sight. <laughs> I've been watching that since the first season. It's like on season 14 now. So it's probably been seven, oh, yeah, eight years. Um, so I, I watched that. And then I've been indulging in some element uh, movies. 
just I will have that on playing while I'm working just that doesn't require anything but just a little fluff um what else I that's it that I can think of right now so thank you for joining me uh, I appreciate you sticking with me this far and I hope that you will come back um, and if you have any questions you can email me leave me a comment and thank you for just listening to me blog and talk about or vlog video log my knitting progress um, so until next time I hope you have a beautiful and a blessed day thank you so much for watching